All right, so now we're going to do a problem where we have some function equal to the integral of some other function. And we're asked to find the Taylor series for that function based at b equals 0. So anytime I see that a function is equal to the integral of another function, and we're asked to find the Taylor series, that means that we want to simplify this as much as possible and make it equal to one of these common Taylor series. Um, or not equal, but very, very similar to one of these. For us to do that, we have to get rid of this integral. And the way that immediately pops to mind is something called the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 1. And what FTC Part 1 says is if you take the integral of both sides, so f prime of x and the derivative of these should be equal to each other. And when you take the derivative of an integral, you simply plug in these uh, values. And um, you can just ignore zero since it's not a variable. So the derivative of f, capital F, is going to be x over 8 plus x cubed. So that looks a little bit more similar to one of these. And um, our important distinction is that this is equal to f prime of x, not equal to f of x. So we're going to have to take the integral of our uh, series that we find. Now the next step is to pair it up to one of these common Taylor series. And the reason we do that is since we already know um, their series equations, it would make more sense to sort of make it look like one of these series so that we can add on to this series equation. This equation doesn't have an e to the x, so we can rule that one out. It doesn't have a cosine, so we can rule that out. And it doesn't have a sine, so we can also rule that out. So the one that we want it to sort of fit the mold of is 1 over 1 minus x. Um, I notice there are a few problems here in that it doesn't really look like that. So we have to mold it. We have to like factor stuff out of the top and the bottom to get it to look like this. And then we would multiply whatever series we get for this by what we factor out. So, um, at the top we want a 1, but we have an x, so what we can factor out is an x, and this is going to be over something, and then um, times 1. And then at the bottom, what we want is we want 1 minus x, so um, this 8 should turn into a 1. So we can accomplish that by dividing by 8, so factor out another 8 here. So now we have 1 plus x cubed over 8. Oh. That's not an 8, over 8. So you see what I did there? You just divide this by 8 and you divide that by 8. Just factor it out. And now we have this. But it still doesn't quite match our, um, our mold. So what we have to do is we have to take the negative of this. So times 1 over 1 minus negative x to the third over 8. And now you might be thinking to yourself, hey, um, this this right here doesn't really match this x notation here, but it does, and I'll explain why. When you have an x here and an x here, what it really just tells you is that this whole thing is equal to x. So you would take this entire thing and factor it in for x to get your series. Now we just substitute stuff in. So n equals 0 to infinity. And since this is our x, we're going to plug this entire thing in for this x here. We're going to plug this entire thing in for x. So negative x to the third over 8 to the n. And we can factor stuff out and make it a little prettier. So n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n. Um, the way you factor stuff out here is you know that... You can imagine that there's a negative 1 out front here. So negative 1 times x to the third. So this is the same thing as saying negative 1 to the n times x to the third to the n, right? That's just exponent rules. So that would be times x to the third to the n, which we can rewrite as x to the 3n, because this is just exponent multiplication. So x to the 3n all over um, 8 to the n. So just sort of piece it apart to make it into something that looks a little bit nicer. All right, so you might think that you're done, but you can't forget this um, little chunk out front that we had to factor out. So now we have to uh, 
add it on to our series equation. So um, this x is not a negative 1, so we wouldn't add anything to this exponent. But it is an x, so um, we would just add on a 1 here. And the reason for this is um, when you have x to the 3n times x, this is the same thing as writing x to the 3n plus 1 exponent rules. So it might be helpful to brush up on exponent rules before you dive into the series unit. Cool. And now we do the same thing with our 8 down here. So we get 8 to the n plus 1. And that is our series equation, but that is our series equation for, once again, f prime of x. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take the integral of this. And that might seem a little gross, a little funky, but bear with me. So our only variable in this entire series notation is our x right here. We don't want to pay, we don't need to pay attention to this, we, need, we don't need to pay attention to that. So negative 1 to the n, um, you would raise this to one more exponent. So you know how to take integrals of things, so the integral of something like x to the squared would be x to the third over 3. So you do the same thing here, plus 2 all over uh, 3 to the n plus 2 times 8 to the n plus 1. And this is your final answer. So um, the Taylor series can be kind of a pain in the butt, but if you remember FTC part 1, and if you remember these common Taylor series, you should be able to just jump to this step here where you already have the series notation for it. And then um, just make it look like one of those Taylor series, and then you take the integral of that series. Ooh, it's the end screen. Click on one of these links to be directed to that playlist. And don't forget to subscribe!